This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Ephraim Mattis is a friend of mine uh, I met through the Free Burma Rangers. He uh, was the guy, if you've seen the FBR movie, if you've seen that, that iconic moment where Dave Eubanks charges into gunfire to save that little girl's life. Ephraim is one of the guys that's providing covering fire for him in that that clip. And uh, he's actually the guy that got shot in the leg just a moment or so after that on their way back out. And uh, Ephraim wrote a book about that and then started a, a aid organization called Stronghold. Uh, that's Stronghold rescue and relief. They've been doing a bunch of work around the world in Burma and uh, in Venezuela. I had the opportunity to go to Venezuela or to the Cucuto Venezuela border uh, with him uh, last year in like May or something and uh, kind of see what they were putting together. They've done a lot of good for a lot of people down there. And uh, as this story has developed, it turns out that Ephraim has some connection with some of those guys and so did I. So uh, Ephraim, why don't you just tell us what happened to you and what you know about what's gone on with this uh, incursion into Venezuela over the last few days? Yeah, sure. So basically, you know, as like, like you said, I run an organization called Stronghold Rescue and Relief. We're a nonprofit humanitarian organization. Uh, we have a children's refuge um, on the Cucuta, uh, in, in Cucuta on the Colombia-Venezuela border. And uh, we also do deliver uh, um, humanitarian aid into Venezuela, and we've been doing that for about a year now. Um, during that time, I was a, I, I made lots of relationships with a lot of fantastic Venezuelan people. And um, at one point, I was approached by the Venezuelan resistance asking if we would uh, do some medical training for them because they knew about the, my military background, but then uh, the humanitarian background as well. So I agreed, I said, yeah, I would be more than happy to come and do some medical training. And so I went to their, I went to their training area and I went with two other guys and we did some medical training with them for about a week. It was during this time though that I began to hear about a specific plan to overthrow Maduro. And as I learned more and more about the plan, they asked if we would be willing to go in with them to provide humanitarian relief and medical support uh, once the operation was over and basically as it was happening. And I've said, yeah, I would be more than happy to do that. That'd be fantastic. However, I will only do it if the United States government is backing you guys and only if the United States government gives us permission to help. I'm not going to step in and go, I'll go all cowboy um, if there's not an actual plan in place and if it's not backed by the U.S. government. And this is where things got a little weird because they said, yes, we are backed by the U.S. government. We have U.S. Army Special Forces guys who are embedding with us. They, you know, some of these guys are a part of the president's detail. They're CIA, they're tier one Delta Force assets. And I said, okay, um, can you, like, can, can, can I speak with any of these guys? And um, the, the only person that they mentioned was this Jordan Gaudreau guy. And within, you know, eight seconds of looking at his social media and his website, I knew, okay, no, this guy is not U.S. government. He is... Um, uh, you know, he's, he's a private security contractor. And it became very clear to me by as, as I asked them more and more questions, I realized as I asked them more and more questions about the upcoming operation to overthrow Maduro, which of course I completely support. I, I, I'm not a friend of Maduro. I'm not a friend of socialism, of course. Um, but as I asked more and more questions about what, about this operation, um, it became increasingly evident to me that this was not anything that was sanctioned by the U.S. government. This was being run by um, a group of, you know, I guess, former Special Forces guys who in, just wanted to go do this on their own without the backing of the U.S. government. And so I realized, okay, there's, this is dangerous. This is not going to work. And anybody who goes in there is going to get killed or captured. And so far, unfortunately, I've been, I've been proven right on that. And it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, I know some of these guys, they're good guys, they're, they're patriotic guys, speaking specifically the Venezuelans, they're good patriotic, freedom-loving uh, freedom fighters who are trying to liberate their country. However, they were highly misled by this group of guys who was, who was, who was down there, who, who were down there um, trying to, I guess, start a war, or, 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 or not, not start a war, but like try to overthrow Maduro on their own without the backing of the U.S. government. And that's just, 
Um, it's foolhardy and it's, uh, it's, it's quite devastating what's, what's happening down there right now as the situation develops because I'm continuing to get reports um, from people who I know down there who are, you know, who are part of the Venezuelan community and word is spreading very quickly about the different things that are happening. And, uh, you know, I'm getting information, you know, 30 minutes after it happens down there. And it's, 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 uh, it's horrible to watch what's happening. So uh, did it become apparent to you that they were making overtures to the U.S. government or they were seeking the help of the U.S. government and they just did not get it? Or did it seem like they were just claiming to have the backing of the U.S. government in order to garner support locally uh, when they did not, in fact, have any, anything of the sort? To be fair, I, I have no evidence, but I firmly believe that they absolutely wanted the backing of the U.S. government. Again, I have no evidence of that, but I, I, I have to believe that they did want the U.S. government to help them. And um, however, the, the issue is that the message that was being sent or that the message that was getting down to the actual uh, Venezuelan resistance guys was that the backing was already there, was that these guys were representatives of the U.S. government. And that's completely inappropriate. You have to be extremely clear and careful anytime you work with a, uh, in, in a foreign country uh, in any kind of capacity like this. You have to make it very clear that you're not a representative of the U.S. government because obviously now this is going to cause a huge amount of policy issues and problems for the current administration. And not just for the current administration, but indeed for pretty much any aid organization that wants to help Venezuelans that comes from the United States, especially if there are any military age males involved. <laughs> exactly. That, that's where we're, we are already running into issues. Um, I spoke with the Associated Press and an article came out on May 1st, and we are already having issues because they are now associating nonprofit humanitarian organizations uh, with being a part of this plan. And it's not even remotely true. So while, while the intention was good, like, let me be very clear about that. The intention of trying to get rid of Maduro, that's a great thing. I fully support that. I love that. It's a wonderful thing. However, the outcome due to the lack of preparation and the lack of planning and the lack of support by the U.S. government, which I saw months ago, um, this, this is having second and third order effects that are, that are causing danger and a lot of problems for, for even the Venezuelan people themselves who need the help from these organizations. Mm -hmm. We're having issues. So now we can't get medicine and food to dying children in Venezuela because of, because of this. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they actually caused more problems than they solved at this point. And I think maybe they were hoping that just uh, it, it would take just a little push to topple this whole thing inside Venezuela. But it turns out that the, uh, the regime is more entrenched than that. Now, uh, uh, one other question. You said you, you went down there and spent some time uh, trying to do some medical training with these guys. What was the state of the camps? What was the state of their training and, and their equipment? Sure. So when I when I went down there, I worked with a um, a, a group of guys uh, who was just one who were just one small cell of what was the larger uh, organization of, of resistance members, and these guys didn't have they didn't have uh, you know proper uh, clean water. They barely had any food. Um, a lot of them didn't have beds. They, don't get me wrong; they weren't living in squalor or living in the dirt or anything like that. But they had like rented out a home and they were all just kind of living there. And um, while while you expect like it's it's. It's, it wasn't um, like, you know, they're soldiers, they're at foreign policemen, like these guys are tough guys, like it's, it's really not the end of the world. However, the problem with this is when you look at the state that they were living in, you realize, okay, there's no support here. These guys don't have food, they don't have water. They kept on asking me like, hey, can you give us food, can you give us water? You know, and I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, but there, there was no support from anybody else. And that's when I was like, that's one of the big reasons why I was like, this can't be backed by the US government. These guys would have food. These guys would have a place to sleep. They would have, you know, to say nothing of uniforms kind of and weapons and night vision and right. things like that. And there was none of that. I had none of that. Or excuse me, th those guys had absolutely none of that. Um, which again, that's not what I was there to, to train them with. We we brought down some medical supplies and did medical training, and it was great. And they're like hardworking, awesome dudes. Um, but yeah, th but what I was told though was that they were supposed that this Jordan guy was going to get them hundreds of weapons and you know all this huge list of, of gear and stuff that they were going to get and um it, it wouldn't be a problem at all to do that if, if it was backed by the u.s government i saw the list they showed it to me and i was like yeah like okay this is this is reasonable if it's backed by the u.s government but you are not going to source automatic weapons and night vision goggles and all this other stuff that was on this list 
um, without the backing of the U.S. government. It's just, it's not, it's not even like, what, what are you doing? Like you're, you're, you are going to turn yourself into an international, you know, weapons uh, smuggler, basically, if you try to get all this stuff. Right. So again, I support them having this because I want them to overthrow Maduro, but the plan itself and the guys who were running it were not, were not sanctioned by the U.S. And, uh, complete, and honestly, like just messed up the entire situation. And now they're, unfortunately paying a heavy price alongside the Venezuelans for, for, uh, I guess, lack of wisdom. And, and yeah. Foresight. Yeah. Just, uh, kind of, it sounds like they were sold a pig and a poke in a way, uh, these very patriotic Venezuelans. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that I've been there and I've had Venezuelans come up to me and say, when is the United States going to invade and take down Maduro? We've got to have the U S military in here. And I've just, my answer has always been, are there no men in Venezuela? I mean, why, why should I send my son to bleed and die for Venezuela if your men are not willing to bleed and die for Venezuela? And this group of men, and I've met some of the same guys you're talking about, uh, I've interviewed them, and, and they are patriotic soldiers, uh, Venezuelan soldiers who've defected into Colombia and really want to do something to take back their country. The problem is there's just not enough of them. And as I think we've seen through this event, they are absolutely just shot through with agents of Maduro who are feeding information back to Maduro and so that there's no operational security at all and without that there's no way they could ever pull something like this off. Right I, I agree the, one of the security issues so first of all actually your, your first comment about these guys being you know uh, freedom-loving um, patriotic men you're absolutely correct you know these guys these guys are amazing the Venezuelan freedom fighters they are amazing they putting their lives on the line it, it truly when the odds are against them and we're seeing that now to go do this this is great like that's a th these guys are awesome however they are being led and they were led and i would use the word duped and um lied to and misled by these group of guys who promised them the world and were able to deliver nothing and i understand that even the 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 the, the special forces guys or the former special forces guys who were running this i know that they mean well i'm sure that they meant well i'm sure that they wanted to do great things however there there's a there's a level of wisdom there that was not uh, shown and they there was a lack of a major lack of discretion you know specifically talking about um you know the the contract between you know silver corp usa and juan guaido mm -hmm. man like if they if 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 juan allegedly you know if 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 Juan Guaido or whoever was supposedly, you know, uh, whoever whoever had signed this contract, if they didn't give you the, the 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 required retainer within the first five days, as the contract stipulated, you need to back out. You need to realize, hey, this isn't. I'm not going to get the support. You know, we saw a video uh, that came out a couple of days ago where Jordan was talking about how he wanted uh, how he he was asked, is the operation going to be successful? And his response was, well, it, it'll be it would be successful if we had more money. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you already launched the mission. It's, yeah. You don't get to make excuses like this. You should have backed out a long time ago right. because you should have realized that this wasn't going to happen. And now there's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, Venezuelan patriots that are killed and captured because they were being misled by mm -hmm. someone who doesn't, who just didn't know what they're doing. And you know what well uh, interests me is that this guy, good. Jordan Goudreau, uh, planned trained, did all of this, you know, like you say, selling this to these guys, but he didn't believe in it enough to go on the mission himself, even though he sent apparently a couple of other American citizens in there on that mission that were captured. Where is right. Jordan Goudreau at this point? And right. um, I, I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, no, that's, that's, that's the bigger that's, question. That's a great point. I mean, um, to be fair, I mean, you know, if he's the kind of the guy, if he's the guy who's kind of handling it from, from a command and control point of view, you know, like you're not going to have your top level guy go in on the front line. I, so I, 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 in his defense, I kind of see that point of view. Mm -hmm. However, though, it's like, hey, you just had two, uh, you just had two of your guys captured by the Venezuelan regime. Like that's, that is like, that is that is absolute worst case scenario. It would be better at, had they actually, you know, uh, fought to the point of, you know, uh, not being captured. If you if you get mm -hmm. if you get my meaning, being captured mm -hmm. is absolute worst case scenario. Yeah. So in my opinion, um, I think that I, it, it, you know, how do I say this? I, you know, like I'll just, I'll just say it, like, it, in my opinion, Jordan should offer himself to the Venezuelan government in exchange for the two guys 
uh, who were captured by the, uh, by the, by the Venezuelan government. That's what a leader would do. That's what a leader would do for sure. Um, But uh, you know, at this point, like you say, it's almost like a Bay of Pigs thing, except the Bay of Pigs actually was backed by the United States. And uh, unfortunately, this probably sets back the entire process of removing Maduro from power uh, somewhat because mm-hmm. the sanctions truly are having an effect and the uh, low oil prices truly are having an effect. And COVID is rampant inside Venezuela right now. So last question, tell me what the people that are, the, the refugees that are coming out of Venezuela into Cucuta and the people inside Venezuela that you've heard about, what are the biggest needs right now for the Venezuelan people? Wow. Well, I would say just the most basic survival necessities, clean water, food, electricity, uh, to, you know, to purify the water and make the food. And they have absolutely nothing. I mean, the same, you know, trying to explain the list of what these people need to survive is, is so massive. I mean, you have, you know, so one of the things that we've been doing with my organization is we've been getting food and medicine to kids who are just dying from starvation and we're getting basic, you know, fever breaking medicines, um, to kids who are getting fevers from drinking dirty water out of some river, you know, and kids are dying from basic fevers from the most simple things that we can get at, You can get a four or $5 medicine here in the United States mm-hmm. uh, that would take care of, take care of these different issues. So the people of Venezuela need quite literally everything. And so again, this whole debacle, this whole uh, charade, this, this, this whole, this whole thing that's happened, um, this, this absolutely sets back the, um, that's, this sets back getting rid of Maduro, but it also exacerbates the problem immensely. And now there's going to be even more mistrust from organizations such as myself, um, such as the organization that I run, um, because now they're going to associate us with these, uh, you know, with these cowboys that went out there and, um, quite frankly, made a, made a huge mess of things. And, I don't know if the resistance will recover or if the opposition can yeah. recover over the next decade um, because of this. It's, it's, yeah. This is a really, really horrible situation for the people of Venezuela. Um, but they're, they're, they're a tough people. The, the Venezuelan people are resilient. They're, they're freedom loving. They're really, really great people. And I know that they'll make it through this. I know we'll um, eventually get rid of Maduro, um, but it's not going to be with a bunch of cowboys uh, out there trying to do this on their own. Yeah, good point. Well, uh, Ephraim, thank you for coming on and thank you for the good work you're doing down there. You and I have both gotten to know some of those guys. And as you say, they are absolutely just salt of the earth and they're, they're great people. They're living in literal third world conditions at this point and they need every bit of help and prayer that they can get. So uh, I appreciate you coming on with us and uh, thank you very much. Well, thanks so much for having me, Chuck. I appreciate it. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.